So, uh, we had a question on genetics about cystic fibrosis. Um, uh, we had a question uh, where we wanted to calculate the recurrent risk of a person and the answer was written 2 by 3, right? So first let's look, uh, there are two types of questions here. Let's look at the first one which is not a bit complicated, it's an easy one. The first one, cystic fibrosis patient. In a patient with cystic fibrosis, we all know that cystic fibrosis is autosomal recessive inheritance. The first question which can be asked here is uh, what is the risk of an offspring? A risk of an offspring to be born for a parents with who are carriers, right? So risk of offspring, let's put like this, a carrier mom, a carrier dad, when they marry, the simple pedigree is going to be just the 4 by 4 uh, uh, punit square. I am putting in the form of a pedigree. That's all. Fine. Capital A, capital A. Capital A, small A. Fine. Capital A, small A. Small A, capital A. And small A, small A. So here, the risk of the offspring will be 25% or 1 by 4. This is the normal question which should be asked. The recurrent risk of an offspring to be born. The second scenario, when we look at the question which was given in the test, it then asks the risk of the sibling to be born or risk of the kid to be born. The question was, I am just formulating question, I don't remember the exact question. Let's say a 20 year old person, a 20 year old person whose parents are carriers. For cystic fibrosis, the question was asked, what is the risk for this guy? So risk of an asymptomatic individual. That's the catch here. Okay, so risk of an asymptomatic individual is the catch here. So why it's important here is, let's assume like this, do you think a person with cystic fibrosis will not present till 20 years of life? Not only cystic fibrosis, any autosomal recessive individual presents at birth or maximum during infancy. So when this person of cystic fibrosis having is 20 year old and it's asymptomatic, which means one thing which I can rule out is this person is, this person is not affected the person is not affected the one thing which I can rule out I'm just going to the pedigree above which we drew I can rule out this totally this is not possible this person can never have this genotype this genotype is not possible because this genotype is this of an affected individual so this normal 20 year old asymptomatic person cannot have a genotype of this so the only three possible genotypes are these so of these so this person's this asymptomatic individuals genotype could be either the person can be completely normal or the person can be in carrier i'm just writing whatever we saw there so of these three possibilities what is the possibility of the person to have an diseased allele is two so of these three possibilities in these two conditions alone this person can have a diseased allele, not a disease, right? So the possibility is 2 by 3. So there are two types of question. So read the question carefully. The first question is a kid to be born in future. The second question, we are looking at a person who is asymptomatic, who has already been living and we presume that guy or girl could never be an affected person. So one genotype is removed ruled out and only we have three genotypes of these three genotypes two genotypes there is a risk of carrying the allele hope it was clear now if you have any doubts do ping me at any point of time i'll try to reply as early as possible